My son Dylan was almost two years old when he contracted pneumococcal meningitis. My son Nicholas was 20 when he had meningitis. It was not on the radar and I never ever expected to get meningitis as an adult. Meningitis killed my son. Uh, he was my uh, first son, my only child actually, and my big love. My daughter Jamie was 20 when she had meningitis. In April 2008, myself and my husband Noel, we lost our four-year-old daughter Ava to meningitis. I wasn't there um, the night Ava died because I was kept in hospital as I was sick with my third pregnancy. My husband put Ava to bed and she was well. By 10 o'clock, she had woken with vomiting and diarrhea. He checked her through the night, but by the time the ambulance was on the way at 5 a.m., Ava had died. The doctor thought that he may possibly have meningitis, and so we proceeded to do a spinal tap. Shortly after that procedure was completed, my son's heart rate dropped and he stopped breathing. We were then airlifted to a children's hospital, and upon arriving that Friday evening, they pronounced him brain dead. Within hours, you can be go from a totally healthy person to dead, or and in Jamie's case, having the loss of her limbs. Um, she is now 24 and walks on prosthetics every day and will every day for the rest of her life. When we got the call, we were told to come to the hospital right away. Once we got there, we were told that he had uh, meningitis. And uh, we were also told that uh, he was brain dead. And uh, that was very tough to accept going from a very healthy young man from a period of maybe three or four hours. And going from that point to being brand date was uh, very disturbing and hard to accept. Uh, I was looking so much forward to watch him grow and I was looking so much forward to give him what my father gave me, learn him the things that my father learned me. What is very important is to know and recognize meningitis immediately. And as communities, we have to realize the value of vaccination and make this a priority to prevent disease.